Hello, my name is Hannes Fröhlich and I'm the Speckman product engineer. In this short video blog, I wanted to tell you about a new way which you can use to learn and play with eCode. Speckman now runs on EDA Playground. If you don't know EDA Playground, let's go and have a look. EDA Playground is basically a website. You can create yourself an account, you can edit some source code, and then you can pass the source code onto some tools which you can select over here with some options. The log files of the tools will be presented back to you at the bottom here in this window, and you can also trace signal changes and look at waveforms, so there is an integrated waveform viewer. EDA Playground has been around for a while, but only recently have we added support for Specment and E. Okay, enough of the talk, let's play. On the left side, there are a couple of examples in different methodologies and languages. We will play with this Hello World example in E. So if you select one of the examples, the screen will update and you will see all the sources. So you can see, you can have multiple files. They are shown as different tabs here. So we have two E files and two Verilog files. At the bottom, you can see a log file from a previous run, but we will run this again. These examples you can basically copy and modify. So this is the whole point of this playground. So you can create your own account, copy the examples, play with it and see how they behave differently. Once you've saved everything, you just hit the run button and the relevant options will be passed to the selected tools. So here you can see we're passing our testbench.e to the simulator. We're creating stubs files and we will also produce some waves. So on the left here, whoops, that was quick. Here is our waveform results. So you can see here in the main window, we said open EP wave after run. So we've dumped some VCD in our test bench and the produced waveform can be shown here. So here's the waveform tool and you can see the different values. So this is a very simple way of writing some code, playing with it, seeing how it behaves and what it does. Even if you don't have access to a particular simulator or tool, you can just do it online, no installation required, excellent. Very good playground. Okay, if you're interested in the details of this actual example, let's have a look how this test bench works and what it actually does. In order to understand the example, you need to understand the ERM or UVM architecture and understand how ERM or UVM work. The general architecture is based around an agent container, which is basically a component which enables you to control one interface. So it has something called a sequencer, which enables you to control what traffic is generated. It has a driver, which drives the traffic onto a interface, and it has monitors and collectors to observe what happens. In general, we have multiple agents, and then we have something called an environment container, which just collects all the agents. And there can be configuration and signal maps as well. So how does this apply to our example? Let's look at the source code in more detail. So here we have mytraffic.e, which contains all traffic related source code. So we have a struct called mytransfer, which has some attributes, command address data, and then we have a sequence statement. So this creates the sequence setup, including a sequence driver, which is the sequencer. Further down here, we have our main sequence. So if you're familiar with ERM, you know that by default, any sequencer that is instantiated wakes up and it, it starts main. So we overwrote the body uh, TCM of main and decided what to do in this test. We're using objections to stop the test when we're finished with our traffic. So we raise an objection and drop it at the end. And in between here is our hello world. And then we do eight transfers. So here we have a short for loop and do transfer basically means randomize one of these transfer structs and send it to the driver. The other E file we've got is the test bench. This has the structure which I've just explained. So we have an environment unit which contains an agent. So this is a very simple env. And inside the agent, we can see we have a driver, which basically takes the transfers and drives them onto the DUT. We have a sequencer, which we've just defined, and we have a signal map, which contains the ports 
uh, to enable Specman to talk to um, RTL signals. The driver is shown here. So it's got pointers to the sequence on signal map. We have a clock. We have some reset TCM, which just sets the reset and then releases it. And then we have drive traffic. So drive traffic basically does reset and then it has a while true loop. So this runs forever. And it basically uh, gets from the sequencer a next item. So this is the default way of connecting to a sequencer. So we get a new item, we drive it onto the signals using ports, uh, and then we tell the sequencer that the item has finished sending. This uh, drive traffic TCM or thread is started in the run phase, uh, which is shown down here. Further up, we have a signal map. So this is a container which contains all the ports which connect from Specman to the RTL signals. So you have a port and you give it some HDL path to know which signal to drive. And finally at the top, we can see how we connected the clock of the sequencer to our RTL clock. Over here on the design and test bench side, we see we have a very simple design. It is basically just a collection of registers which we can drive from, from Specman. And then when we have a posage of the clock, we print out all kinds of values of these different fields which we or of these different registers which are driven from Specman. Um, we only do this once we're out of reset. In the test bench we have an instance of our device, uh, we have a little bit of clock generation and we are dumping some waveforms. At the bottom of this screen you can see the log file, so let's have a quick look at that. So here we can see we called uh, Specman to create a stops file then we call the simulator with Specman, and here we can see our test running. So here we have our hello world message, and then we can see different transfers which had been generated and driven onto the um, RTL DUT. And again, you can compare this to the waveform over here, which, uh, which was also dumped. So that was our simple example. If you have any questions on how to use EDA Playground, have a look at the online documentation. It contains a very useful little YouTube video which goes over the different windows and it has lots of information on the different tools, different switches used on those tools, different methodologies and languages and so on and so forth. There's also links to other more detailed documentation on very specific things. There's also a, a user forum where you can ask questions so you're pretty much uh, set up here to, to move forward and play with this without too much, uh, too much additional help. This is the end of the blog. I hope you found it useful. Maybe I'll see you sometime on the forum asking a question or maybe I'll see you in person somewhere else. Have fun and goodbye.